Hi everyone, how's it going? It's a chilly day here in London, so I've got my cozy new jumper on, uh, or sweater you might say. Uh, I just naturally say jumper now because uh, that's just uh, another way that I've lost my American identity. Uh, so uh, I'm in that wonderful position this morning where last night before I went to bed, I finished reading a new book. And, uh, and so this morning I get to choose what I want to read. So I was just looking through my books and thought I would do a book Call um, talking about new books that are published in February that I'm excited about reading and try to figure out which one I want to read next. Now most of these have been uh, sent to me by publishers uh, but uh, there are a couple um, which I got my, for myself because uh, I, I was just really interested to, to read them. So, so one evening um, before uh, they closed I, I went along to Persephone Bookshop in London and uh, picked up uh, this copy of The Homemaker by Dorothy. Dorothy Canfield Fisher, and uh, I'd never heard of this author before. I was just sort of browsing around, and most of the covers of their books are a sort of complete dove gray color, but, um, but a number of their books they've published with images on the cover, and this is an image that just caught my attention because it's just so sweet, a uh, sort of reading in bed image. And, uh, and then I read the description of it, and it sounded so Good. So this was first published in 1924 and is about a, uh, a family, a, a couple who the, uh, the husband, he gets injured and uh, isn't able to work anymore. So he stays at home and takes care of the children and the mother uh, goes to work and becomes the breadwinner of the family. And they find that this situation just works much better for them as a family. So it's sort of thinking about those sort of role, gender role reversals that at the time was, you know, a bit uh, radical. But I mean, obviously now that's sort of like part of the course. But, um, but yeah, so I, I think it's really interesting that this novel back from 1924 is writing about that, that situation. So, um, so yeah, I'm really curious to, to read this. And I also got this book that a lot of people are talking about called Square Haunting. This was published last month. Um, it's by Francesca Wade. And uh, it's about uh, the sort of interwar period in one uh, square in, in London with a group of uh, famous pioneering women who are all living in that space during that time and working in that space and, and sort of had um, different relationships with each other. Um, so the five women it concerns is H.D., who is a modernist uh, poet, Dorothy L. Sayers, who is a detective novelist, uh, Jane Ellen Harrison, who is a classicist and translator, Eileen Power, um, who is a historian and broadcaster, and uh, Virginia Woolf, who is a great modernist novelist and and publisher and uh, and so it's and it's just such a beautiful book as well I mean look at the the cover and then you take off the end papers and and you say the square and uh, the, the inside and it's just all so gorgeous and I've just had so many friends who have been talking about this and, and saying it's really great and so yeah I'm very excited to to read it and then uh, so the, the the novel I finished last night um, was weather by Jenny awful which is actually uh, awful or I was I was, I was, I would say like awful um, but uh, is, is that how you pronounce it because that just sounds like awful like it's horrible um, but but it's awful I think <laughs> I, I don't know um, but uh, but anyway uh, this is really great novel and one of the things I really loved about it was that it's so funny uh, it's it's has a real sense of humor while talking about modern life and, and modern situations and so a new novel that's published um, this month is called Theft by Luke Brown and uh, and this novel is meant to be very comic as well and take a sort of humorous look at modern Britain and modern life. Um, it's about a, a young journalist um, who uh, finds that he uh, he's not able to write about the things that he really wants to write about um, in his journalism because he has to make money. Um, but uh, one of the gigs, gigs he gets is to interview a cult novelist, um, sort of eccentric cult novelist. And then he finds himself becoming entangled in her life and uh, and the life of her family and uh, yeah so it's just meant to be very funny and good sort of look at, at modern life so yeah curious to, to read that. The Illness Lesson by Claire Beams. This is a debut novel about an elite progressive school for young women and they find that a mysterious illness besets all the 
girls at the school and uh, some of the teachers. And so a sinister physician comes to the school to try to treat them. And, uh, and this had uh, praise from um, some really great authors, uh, including Joyce Carol Oates, no less, um, who calls it a feminist voice for the 21st century that is wickedly sharp-eyed, wholly unpredictable, and wholly engaging. And, uh, and there's also a blurb from uh, Lenny Zumas, who, who wrote uh, Red Clocks, um, a novel I really enjoyed uh, last year, and uh, she calls it stunningly good, a page-turner that's gorgeous and frightening in equal measures. It dazzled me. The Crying Book by Heather Christel. Uh, this has such a beautiful cover, doesn't it? Uh, and this is a non-fiction book uh, where the, the author, um, she initially got the idea to write this where she thought she would try to write a map um, of all the, the places that she's cried in her life. But it became a sort of meditation about uh, the process of crying, the meaning of crying, why we cry. And, uh, and it's funny, I just saw in the back of this, this uh, Lenny Zumas also uh, blurbed this book. Um, I guess she's been reading a lot lately. Um, so, and she calls it spellbinding and propulsive, the map of a luminous mind in conversation with books, songs, friends, scientific theories, literary histories, her own jagged joy and despair. Heather Christel is a visionary writer. Three Apples Fell from the Sky by Noreen Abgaryan. This is a novel about a remote Armenian village uh, which barely has any contact with the, the outside world and it's very difficult to get to this village. So they live a very self-contained life where, where they just sustain themselves and it's a very tight-knit community. Uh, but then a romance blossoms in this village um, which creates a lot of gossip and scandal and and uh, sort of shakes things up. Uh, so uh, yeah, it sounds like a very fun story. Swimming in the Dark by Tomasz Jedrowski. Uh, this is a novel about two young men in Poland in 1980 uh, when it was still a, a communist state. And uh, over one summer, uh, they, they meet and they do a lot of swimming and reading books and they fall in love with each other. So it's, it's a story um, about their, their lives with each other during that time. And, uh, and uh, Edmund White uh, blurbed this novel and he calls it a lyrical exploration of the conflicts between gay love and political conformity. Jedrowski is an authentic new international star. Gathering Evidence by Martin McInnes. It has this beautiful a trippy sort of rainbow cover and I read his debut novel called Infinite Ground which is really difficult to describe it's this sort of abstract uh, detective type story and uh, this new novel sounds much in the same line so it's it's sort of about climate change and about the way our personal data is held in computers and and the risks of that uh, but it's also about a couple who lose their identity and have to try to track the the pieces down and and uh, yeah, it's just very difficult to describe his his writing, but it's it's really interesting and uh, intellectual and uh, and really engaging and fun is as well. And I, I just keep like liking to do uh, this with with the cover because it's so pretty. The Last Day by Andrew Hunter Murray. Uh, this is a novel uh, which I I don't know if I I'm I can't make up my mind whether I want to read it or not. Um, let me know if you've read any of his books before and if you think um, he's he's worth reading. Uh, so this is a novel about how the, the earth stops revolving. So one half of the earth is in blazing heat and the other half is in freezing cold. And so there's only a very thin line um, where humans are able to actually inhabit the world, um, which has a sort of moderate semi-moderate climate still and uh, and so it's about uh, obviously all the problems that that come along with that and uh, yeah it's it sort of sounds like a, a fun story that I'd like to engage with but um but yeah I'm just not really sure yet so let me know what you think. Dust Tracks on a Road by Zora Neale Hurston and this is a reissue of uh, Zora Neale Hurston's autobiography and it comes with a new introduction by Jasmine Ward and the cover is just so beautiful to this and I've read a couple of Hurston's novels, but um, but never her autobiography. Um, so this is great motivation to finally get to this. The Quarry by Ben Halls. Uh, this takes place on a London estate and is about the lives of a number of different working class individuals. Um, it's a, it's a group of interconnected short stories. And uh, and just recently, a couple months ago, I read Glenn James Brown's uh, novel Ironopolis, um, which uh, is also about the uh, sort of interconnected group of stories 
stories about the lives of a number of working class individuals, but it um, takes place in a northern city. And, uh, and so he gives a blurb for this, uh, this book and he says, Hall's stories show that even in zero hour austerity battered Britain, the tenderness and warmth of human connection exists. And I think a lot of these stories are meant to sort of explore modern masculinity as well. So uh, yeah, very keen to read this. I was also sent the uh, 150th issue of Granta magazine. And I used to read a lot more literary magazines and, and subscribe to literary magazines. But in recent years, I, I just have let my subscriptions lapse and haven't read them as much, but um, uh, but I think I should get back into subscribing to them because it's a really good opportunity to read um, some exciting new fiction or extracts from um, fiction uh, or writers that I really enjoy. And so uh, there's a new short story in here by Carmen Maria Machado, um, and I just read her memoir recently and have enjoyed her fiction in the past, and it comes with this illustration um, as well. And so, yeah, I'm very excited to, to read that and peruse some of the other stories in, in this new issue. The Girl from Nowhere by Aliska Tanzer. This is a memoir about the author's life growing up in a family of gypsies in, in Britain and how she's expected to join the family business of running a prostitution ring, um, but how she wants to escape doing that uh, by becoming an intellectual. And so it's about her journey um, into becoming an educated woman, um, but also fighting against the, the persecution of, of um, that, that she encounters um, coming from the background that, that she does. So yeah, it sounds like a very good nonfiction book. Hurricane Season by Fernanda Melchor. Uh, this is a new novel being published by Fitzcarraldo Editions, and the, the story of this sounds good. Um, so it's a, it's a Mexican novel, and in the, the local village, uh, the, the witch of that village uh, dies and is murdered, and so a group of children go about investigating how she died and why she died. And uh, and yeah, it just, that sounds like such a like thrilling plot. And, uh, and also it has a blurb from Samantha Schweblin who wrote Fever Dream. Uh, and she says that Fernanda Melchor has a powerful voice and by powerful, I mean unsparing, devastating, the voice of someone who writes with rage and has the skill to pull it off. Big Girl, Small Town by Michelle Gallen. Um, this is a novel that takes place in Northern Ireland uh, in a time after the Troubles have finished, but when the, the resonance of the Troubles can still be felt. And it's about a young woman who uh, sort of doesn't want to be involved in all of the politics of that, um, but finds herself drawn into it um, because her father missed um, went missing during the the troubles and then her her grandmother dies and so she finds herself just drawn into this story so it sounds like a novel very much in the tradition of Anna Burns milkman um, but uh, but is uh, has has this uh, cone of chips on the cover because she works in a chips shop uh, but uh, but it's published by John Murray press um, uh, who published really great new novels like they published Elmet and and uh, Jesse Greengrass's work before. So, um, so yeah, I think it sounds like a very good new novel. Lampedusa by Stephen Price. Uh, this has a really beautiful cover. Um, so this is a novel about a novelist, uh, the novelist Giuseppe Tomasi, um, who wrote the, the novel The Leopard. And Giuseppe Tomasi um, is descended from a noble family, uh, but they're, they're, they're not noble anymore. And, uh, and I've never read the, the novel The Leopard, uh, but I saw the film, um, which I thought was interminably boring, um, but I know it's a really great classic novel um, that I should try reading at some point, so maybe I would like the novel better. But um, but I think it's interesting how the, it almost seems to be a trend where um, there, there's novels about great novelists. Like last year there was a novel about the um, the, the author of jo Dr. Zhivago that, that came out, but, uh, but yeah, so I'd be really curious to read this. The American Fiancé by Eric DuPont. Uh, this is a really big novel, over six 650 pages long, uh, but it's a family saga tracing three generations of a family with all of uh, their, their secrets and their rises to fortune and their fall from grace and, and all of that. And I love a good, rich family saga. Um, so Eric Dupont is a Canadian novelist and this is translated from the French. So going from a very big book to a very short book uh, is a new book of short stories called Exercises in Control by Annabelle 
banks. And uh, this is only about 100 pages long, and a lot of the stories are only seven or eight pages long. But, um, but that's a good length of short story because quite often I'll read aloud to my partner, and so we'll, we'll only try to do usually short stories that are like eight to 12 pages long. So that's a good length. And, and a lot of these stories are meant to be darkly humorous, and some of them are absurd. So, uh, so yeah, that sounds really good to me. So it's quite early in the morning, and, uh, and the, the light uh, is coming up, and and uh, so it's going to keep changing behind me as I'm talking about these, these books. So the next novel I have is a novel from Ireland, and it's called The Temple House Vanishing by Rachel Donahue. And, uh, and so this takes place in a Catholic boarding school, and one of the young women, uh, a pupil, uh, she uh, disappears from that school alongside a very charismatic and bohemian teacher. And, uh, and many years later, one of the, the girl's classmates um, she becomes a journalist and she tries to investigate what happened uh, to that young woman and this teacher and, uh, and unwraps all these mysteries. Uh, so that sounds really good. Amnesty by Aravand Adiga. Um, this is the, the Booker Prize winning author of The White Tiger. And this is his new novel about a Sri Lankan young man who goes to Australia on a student visa, but then he stays there past the time limit of his visa and becomes um, an illegal worker. And uh, so it's about his, his life and journey during that time. And The White Tiger was a novel I enjoyed, but I didn't hugely, I can't remember it all that that clearly. Um, so, but I'd be really curious to, to read more of this author's work. The Slaughterman's Daughter by Jana Ikovitz. Uh, so uh, there, it seems to be like a trend in publishing. Actually, it's a trend that's been going on for over a decade or so, um, where, where you, you create a title for a novel by thinking of a profession and then a relation to that profession. So you have like the, the piano tuner's cousin or, uh, or the, the electrician's uh, great-grandmother, or something like that, and then you have the title of a novel. So I feel like it's a bit of a tired thing of, uh, of saying that, but saying the slaughterman's daughter, um, I think it's a curious uh, new way of, of, of writing a, a title like that. But anyway, this is a novel um, about a, a woman who is a sort of like very um, successful matriarch, and she has a number of children, uh, but then one day she just, vanishes vanishes and uh, and then all the villagers try to find out what happened to her um, so it's the, the story of that journey a paragon by column McCann uh, this has this beautiful silver cover to it and I've never read this this Irish novelist Colin McCann before but I've always wanted to and always meant to and this this novel is quite a big novel um, is meant to be a really amazing book uh, so it's about an Israeli man and a Palestinian man and their their connection with each other um, which sounds like to uh, highly politicized uh, sort of subject matter to, to delve into, but it's, it's really meant to be an amazing novel and I keep hearing great, great things about it. And it actually comes with a special introduction by the writer uh, Michael Cunningham, um, who really praises it highly and says it could be just a, a, a great, uh, one of the great new novels. So um, yeah, very excited to read this. And another book that everyone seems to keep talking about is this debut novel called Topics of Conversation by Miranda Popkey. And uh, so this is a novel that has a really interesting structure to it. Um, so it follows a number of decades in the life of a, a woman, but through the conversations she has with other women. So it's sort of about how she's narrating her, her own life. And I think that's a, that's a really interesting strategy to go about telling the story because it's very, um, it, it says a lot um, the, the way that people choose to narrate their life and frame their own life uh, as different stories. And finally, I was sent a couple of novels from Ballastier Press um, who published these beautiful editions of, of books translated um, from uh, novels and writers from the, the Far East. And so the first book is called An Unrest by Yen Pui Nigon. Um, and this is a novel that takes place in Singapore and is about a group of Malay teenagers who, uh, who want to revolutionize uh, their, their country and, um, and really, really change the politics of their time.
time, but they find as they, they grow up and over time, um, their values change. And so it's about, about that whole process. And then there is a family saga um, called the Chili Bean Paste Clan uh, by Yan Ji. And, uh, and so this is about the, the story of this family's life, how they own this successful business and their life revolves around this, this business. And the, the grandmother, the, the great matriarch of, of this family, um, is just turning 80 years old. And so they're planning a big party for her 80th birthday, um, but then a lot of family secrets come out. So it just sounds like a really great like family saga um, in, in that way. So uh, yeah, I'm very curious to, to read this. So those are all the books I want to talk about. I'm not sure what I'm going to start with reading next. Um, I think I, I probably, the next book I, I want to probably read is Swimming in the Dark, this, this novel. So I think I might start with this, but not really entirely sure. Um, but let me know which of these books you think um, sound most interesting, which you're really curious about. Or if you've read any of them, let me know your thoughts about them in the comments below. So hope you have a good day. Uh, stay warm um, if it's cold where you are. And uh, I'll speak to you again soon. Bye, everyone.